particularly Dom Hans, who's uh, had a lifelong passion for Lotus Alliance. Uh, you've built up a few over the years, haven't you, Dom? Yes, we're beginning to lose count now, but we've uh, we've raced them and have built them as road cars. And the family currently have five between me, my son, and my daughters. Um, and uh, we have three others which now belong to best friends, which used to belong to us. So it's quite a big, uh, quite a big extended family of lotuses. Right, fantastic. Now you've got two here uh, at the at the event today, uh, both very different eras. Yes, this this one here is a 1964 Land Series Two. Um, one of the first thousand built. This was roughly number four, 300. Um, and it's been rebuilt to be as near as I possibly can get it, the same as it would have come out of the factory um, in um, the second Lotus factory in the Waltham Cross. Um, so I've tried to keep it as original as I possibly can using as many original components as I can. And it dates again from when? From 1964. Right, okay. Uh, it was very light. Um, it was it must have seemed a bit like owning a space shuttle in 1964. It was very advanced, uh, had fantastic road holding, very quick off the line, um, but it was not cheap. It was the same price as a contemporary E-Type. Mm -hmm. So it was, it would outbreak an E-Type, it would outcorner an E-Type, and it would outrun an E-Type up to about 100 miles an hour. So it really was quite something in its really day. Really terrific car in its day. And then moving on down the line here, you've got a, a, another Elan of a, of a, of a yes. different era. The, yeah? the, the blue, the, so tell me about this Elan, Don. Right, this is a Series 4 Elan, known as a Sprint. Um, it has the same engine, but with bigger valves giving more power. The white one gave about 100 brake horsepower, this one gave about 126 brake horsepower. This car, however, the approach with this car has been very different. This is, I think, the eighth from last Elan of this style that was built. Um, Simon's approach to this one has been very different. He wanted it to look like it came out of the factory, mm -hmm. but once you got under the bonnet, it's very different. Mm -hmm. So the engine is a tuned engine. It has a cooling system which we developed for the racing cars with a radiator right down in the nose. It has a thicker body shell because fiberglass technology had moved on and the body shells were much better by the time okay. they were building this. Very slightly wider so it could take a wider tyre. Right. Uh, much more luxurious. It had better yes. seats. Yes, you can see the, uh, the, the raising the stand of the interior trim here, can't you? It looks uh, you know, very much more modern. It's got, um, it's got electric windows yeah. rather than slide up and down one. The interior trim is much more... Yeah, padded steering wheels and a wooden one. It had a folding hood. The hood on the white car you had to dismantle and put in the boot. Oh, that sounds a real problem. Which it could be, yes. Yeah. You needed 10 minutes notice it was going to yeah. rain. Right. This one here it lies underneath this cover okay. and it's just you just pull it forward and it goes into position. So they were beginning to go steadily up market. Mm -hmm. And at the end, when the production of the... Oh, the other thing I should say is this has got a roll-over bar in it. Non-standard. Non-standard. Um, but obviously, if you're going to drive an open car with children in it, some people feel like to feel they've got safer. that little bit more security. Yeah, sure. um, and when they finished doing this car, the next series of Lotuses were what people refer to as the Wedges. Mm. The Elite, the Eclat, mm. the Esprit. Mm. And they were beginning to move up market because the accountants have said, if it costs us £800 to build this car and we can sell it for £1,200, why don't we build something much more luxurious, which will probably only cost us £1,000, and we right. can sell it for £2,500. Mm -hmm. So they began to move up market and compete with the, mm -hmm. the, the more established marks by then. Mm -hmm. But Chapman's, Colin Chapman, who founded Lotus, his only interest was racing. Right. And all the road cars he produced were produced for one reason, and one reason only, it was to give him the wherewithal to go Formula One racing, which of course he did with immense success. Indeed he did. And. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to say that um, a lot of the old racing cars have been preserved by the Chapman family and they run an organisation called Classic Team Lotus where they restore a lot of the original Formula One cars that form part of the family collection um, and I'm a patron of Classic Team Lotus which is wonderful for somebody like me. 
you cut me and I bleed green and yellow. Um, <laughs> and that's keeping alive a lot of the old cars which otherwise would have disappeared. So Well, you know, like I said, you know, you can tell uh, Don's a, has a real passion, has had a lifelong passion for not Colin Chapman, but Lotus well, Cars. Chapman and, and his product. Chapman was, and his products. was a fantastically innovative engineer. Um, and what really drew me to Lotus is, even when I was very young, was the fact that, you know, he could do, he could take a standard component and he could make it do three more things than anybody else could make it do. And his motto was simplicate and add lightness. Mm -hmm. And that, that was his engineering mm -hmm. philosophy. And that's how he managed to produce these cars that were 15 years ahead of their time. Yes. Uh, an amazing engineer. And it's been a real privilege to, you know, to race his cars, to drive his cars and to be involved in them. Terrific. Thanks very much, John. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Chris.